But first, the latest on the search for a murder suspect. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I am Terry Brewer. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit is looking for a man who they say may be armed. In our top story tonight at 5 o'clock, the latest on what happened and who investigators want to find. It happened early Saturday morning just after midnight at an apartment complex on 37th Street in Northport. Investigators say the victim, 22 year old Victor Rosas, was shot and killed by 30 year old Oscar Moran Rivera. Investigators say the victim was dating a relative of the suspect. Investigators say the suspect then left with that woman and drove to Pell City. She got out at a gas station, alerted authorities, and Rivera got away. She was not harmed, but investigators say the suspect may be armed. We talked to an apartment resident who says he was at the scene of the crime. People, they was going out, in and out of number nine. And, uh, and uh, somebody said they saw a, a person up there and they looked dead. We're looking for him a lot of places. Uh, we, there is an active uh, search for the suspect going on as we speak. Now, investigators believe Oscar Moran Rivera is traveling in the victim's blue 2001 Toyota Celica. The tag number is 63G36S1. If you have any information on where he may be, you can contact Northport Police or the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office. You can also call Crime Stoppers and give a confidential tip. Their number is 205-752-STOP. The number on your screen, again, is not correct. 205-752-STOP. It is one for the history books in Tuscaloosa. The very first day of Sunday alcohol sales in the city has come and gone. Some local business owners we spoke with were pleased with customer turnout yesterday. Voters approved the referendum last month, allowing alcohol sales from noon until 9.30 p.m. anywhere that has a license to sell alcohol. Many restaurants, especially in downtown Tuscaloosa, have actually changed their hours to be open on Sundays now. And those already open on Sundays reported higher sales. Meanwhile, Cypress Inn owner Drew Henson says he didn't expect such a large crowd Sunday night. We didn't expect it to be a big, a big deal for us. Uh, just so happened we were very busy Sunday night. Uh, we didn't expect to do any at lunch. We probably did not. And, uh, but we were very busy Sunday night. Had a lot of big groups and, they, uh, and we, our sales were much better. Henson says over time he thinks seven-day sales will boost the Tuscaloosa economy. A Tuscaloosa City Council member tells us there's a stipulation that if a bar gets out of hand, the council can come back and modify the law. The referendum approved by voters gives the council the power to regulate any aspect of Sunday sales. People in West Alabama are still reacting to the news that the State Department of Mental Health plans to close the Partlow Developmental Center in Tuscaloosa. The announcement came Friday to more than 400 employees and the families of more than 150 residents. Opinions are mixed about the closure. Some groups, including the Ark of Tuscaloosa, say it will benefit residents and give them a chance to experience life outside the facility. But Karen Gritzmacher has two older brothers at Partlow. She says she would feel more comfortable if the center stayed open. It's beautiful and it's safe and I just cannot believe that they are going to send these individuals out into a cruel world where people out there really don't care about them, treat them like third world citizens. Gritzmacher says the range of individual disabilities at Partlow is wide and not all of the 150 residents are capable of supporting themselves. Now the Department of Mental Health says the residents will transition to community life with an individual placement plan. The closure of Partlow will mean the loss of more than 400 jobs, but mental health officials say they expect this to create about 400 jobs in the private sector. On your Crime Watch, the latest on an Alabama high school football coach charged with child molestation. Dwight Bowling has pleaded not guilty to charges of fondling, sexual battery, and child exploitation. Bowling's trial has now been rescheduled to April, April 11th, it was set to start this month in Greenville, Mississippi. Bowling is on administrative leave from his job at a, as a coach at Sullivan High School. The charges stem from when Bowling was a coach in Mississippi. On your Money Watch, a look at what the White House may do to help with skyrocketing gas prices. AAA reports today's average of a gallon of regular in Alabama is $3.41. The White House says a decision on whether to tap into the strategic oil reserve 
would be based on more than just the price of gas. The president's spokesperson said today there are other factors to consider, like whether there's been a major disruption in the flow of oil. President Barack Obama's chief of staff said over the weekend the president was considering releasing oil from the 727 million barrel reserve to deal with the spike in prices. Today's national average for regular is 350 a gallon. And speaking of being on the road, a new poll from Consumer Reports says 63% of drivers under 30 say they've driven while using a handheld cell phone. 30% say they've sent text messages behind the wheel. Now, maybe those findings don't surprise you, but what about this? Only 30% of drivers under 30 think that type of behavior is dangerous. The U.S. Transportation Secretary says 5,500 people across the country were killed in 2009 in distracted driving driving crashes. And new for you at 5 o'clock, the U.S. Supreme Court will not hear an atheist challenge to the inscription of the national motto, In God We Trust, on U.S. coins and currency. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says the phrase is ceremonial and has nothing to do with the establishment of religion. The court refused to he hear an appeal on that decision. A radio station that's been part of West Alabama since the 40s is making a change. You can now find WTBC on your FM dial. It's the first time since 1948 that Tuscaloosa's WTBC has an Welcome FM Jack signal. FM, WTBC Radio The River is now on AM 1230 and FM 105.1. WTBC officials say since more people are moving to FM, there are fewer signals available, which made the process longer. WTBC's operations right, manager says it will provide right. better coverage. It will mean a better coverage area, especially at night. You know, AM signal was kind of grainy. When you went under power lines, you got a lot of noise. Now you won't have that problem. During severe weather, we'll be able to serve the community much better here in West Alabama than we have before. McDaniel says the addition of an FM signal has been in the works for about three years.